Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today I am around Westmount area of Montreal. It's only about like 10 minutes bus ride from downtown. And as always, there's actually a lot of construction sites around Montreal. Yeah, so these are nice street names. And here I'm approaching uh, this cafe uh, called Myriad. Yeah, they have several of this uh, chain cafes around Montreal. And so I ordered a uh, chocolate chip cookie and a latte. Now I'm ready to sketch the view outside the window. I'm going to begin with the man and the lady chatting. So I'm kind of measuring the uh, size and placement to put these two people. I think they might just stand up and leave any, any minute now. So it's good to, uh, to get them on paper. So I'm beginning to draw the hat of the man first, and then his face, his ear, and the nose, and a little bit of mustache, a little accentuation underneath the hat to show a bit of a sense of sh shadow. Yeah, so because they are sitting at quite a distance, so and also the sunshine is so bright, it's a little hard to see the details. I think he was uh, he was wearing a scarf. It's, it's not a ponytail. I think it's the uh, the other end of his scarf, drawing his upper body and his arm. Um, his hand is in his pocket, right there, and the, the back of his chair. But drawing that, the two legs of the chair and his other arm is connected to the uh, edge of the table, the round table. And drawing this little coffee cup of the lady. Now I'm ready to draw uh, the senior ladies. She was, uh, I can only see her back view right now, but I think that she moved a little bit. This is the back of her head. It's a little bit hair texture with wriggly lines. Her collar. And the hood of her jacket. her shoulders, and the back of her chair. A little bit of thickness and the holes on the chair. Just do that with dots, adding a little accentuation for the back of her jacket, the hood area, and also for the thickness area of the table. And also drew the two chairs uh, in the foreground and now I'm starting to add the skin color so I mix my own skin color with orange and red and dilute the mixture with a lot of water and also painting the hair very lightly with diluted brown or burnt sienna um, this guy is wearing this blue jacket just putting this uh, mix of cerulean blue and cobalt blue together nice and loose and not worrying about those brush strokes. Those brush strokes actually add a bit of relief to the fabric close. Yeah, and just you know, adding this bit of uh, dark shade of green. So I mix brown into a very thin green to get this kind of deep shade of green for her jacket. And these chairs are of a, like a lime green color. Yeah, it matches the uh, the color of my coffee mug, which is the, I think this is the uh, signature color of this cafe, green, lime green. And adding another layer of purple blue, so I mix a little royal purple into ultramarine blue to get this shade tone for this guy's jacket. The, the top of his jacket shines because of the sunshine, like shining right on, right on top of his body. And adding a bit of shade in the back of the lady's head. I think that's it. They're, they're, they're leaving now. They're giving each other a hug and they're ready to go. And yeah, I'm glad I finished it before they, they left. Okay, so now after finishing my latte and chocolate chip cookie, I'm ready to draw the rest of the stuff around uh, these two people. So it's actually the two ladies um, came and sit down on the right side. But I think, um, you know, sometimes we can move people around in the scenery so it gives better balance to a sketch. So these lady were actually sketching on the right hand side, not over here. Yeah, so I'm just like doing a little shifting work over here, drawing, I just drew the, the back view of one of the lady's head, the shape of the hair, 
and this lady's pretty happy facial expression with sunglasses on her forehead, her cup of coffee, the neck and her shoulders. Yeah, yeah, so I'm pretty happy, you know, that I captured her facial expression really well. Using black ink, so kind of adding some shade in between strands of hair. And that's it for these two people in the very foreground. And now I'm starting to add the railings surrounding the patio area of the cafe. A little bit of perspective. Yeah, so now I'm kind of trying to connect the next large thing beside the railing, which is uh, this wooden flower bed. We're drawing the shape of the box first, which is a pretty um, easy rectangle behind the lady's head, and then drawing these foliages. Yeah, it was very loose, organic lines, trying to follow my observation of how these leaves and stalks are growing. Yeah, some leaves are very small, some leaves are long and draping. And so, yeah, that's the form that I see inside the flower bed. Yeah. And the flower bed is actually um, of a black box. So I'm just using like solid black ink to fill it in. So yeah, it looks more interesting and stands out better. And behind the flower bed, there is this car, this, this car parked on the side of the street. Yeah, so drawing that is easy when things are being overlapped by another, by another thing in front of it. So you only need to draw partially of the thing and okay so now i am seeing the next layer behind the car which is the uh, the wooden uh fence surrounding the sitting area of the restaurant on the other side of the street and just adding those parallel lines to show the wooden planks and behind the sitting area on the other side of the street is it's the buildings yeah there's the row of of buildings in front of the building on the right hand side i see these uh, traffic signs on a pole, like parking signs. And then right behind the parking uh, signs, there's this little tree, so like drawing that. The very thin branches, the little trunk and the tiny twigs is a very young tree. Yeah, and then behind the tree, this is very, the very top of the building. Yeah, so again, I am using black ink to color in the tree trunk and the branches uh, just so it looks more solid. It stands out better because there are like so many of those poles and trees overlapping over there. So yeah, so they look better and stronger with solid black ink and adding a couple of, of branches and twigs for this tree. Yeah, and some more. There we go. So yeah, it looks very natural this way. And now I'm starting to add another smaller tree behind the uh, the sitting area. Yeah, I think I'm just trying to get these trees done before adding any further details. And yeah, okay, now I'm drawing the first floor of these restaurants and uh, little shops. I'm dividing this row of windows into like several smaller areas so all of these glossy areas inside each little frame so like drawing that so the way that i'm doing urban sketching is that i always begin with the largest shape first and then these medium and smaller shapes for the windows adding a little bit of hatching to show the uh, the shaded glass during daytime. Yeah, so overall this row of buildings is very easy to draw. They're just like straight on without any perspective, without any distortions of lines and shapes. Yeah, very straightforward. And now I'm starting to draw these windows on the second floor. Again, these are just like repetition. They look very much the same. Yeah, with this uh, tall rectangular shape and a little windowsill underneath divided by two like square glasses 
yeah, glass panels for each. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Adding a little bit of uh, hatching vertically to show the shade. Most of the windows during the day, they look pretty dark. And now I'm adding these super quick and loose horizontal lines to show the, uh, the layers of bricks. Yeah, that's the brick building. And very quick, short little vertical lines. This is like a really fast and effective way that I uh, that I draw bricks. Yeah, and just adding some final details on the very right side of the sketch. Just door and arc shape on the right side, and I'm not gonna draw any further because there's the uh, this construction thing covering the the building on the very right. I'm gonna leave it blank. Just let the viewer to imagine, and I added the title and a little note. Here's the finished line work. All right, now it's time to add the watercolors. So as always, I begin with the sky area. So just wetting that was a little bit clear water. And the sky is just a pure cerulean blue today. So just grab a little cerulean blue. Actually, I'm mixing a little bit of uh, lime green. So it's a tiny bit of turquoise, very fresh looking using these long brush strokes and also showing a tiny bit of movement of sky at the same time i don't want it to look like solid blue and then i'm just wetting the uh, the ground area with a little clear water and also the exterior of the building as well adding this uh, bit of yellow ochre because it's a bright sunny day, everything is reflecting the warm color of the sunshine. So just adding that here and there, even the sunshine is being reflected onto these windows. We're quickly adding on the mix of burnt sienna with a little bit of red for these buildings. Just adding this very quickly and loosely. Yeah, so I'm just gonna cover this very quickly and let it dry before adding any further definitions. So sometimes it's just better to wait for the first layer to dry before adding any sharper definitions. Yeah, I'm just adding these uh, turquoise colors, those blue greens here and there for these uh, glassy areas of the uh, display windows. And also mixing in a little blue and magenta, so a bit more gray, unsaturated color of gray. And also painting very loosely, leaving little gaps in between each brush stroke just to show the bit of shine of the glass. Yeah, and putting on this pink color for the for this boutique shop or a flower shop. And um, yeah, also a little bit red here and there as I observe just kind of adding these colors on with almost like singular brush strokes over one one area and not going back again and again was like scrubbing that area with color so just yeah put the color on let it go and move on to the other areas very quickly just fill in those windows with the leftover grays Yeah, and also the, the canopy of these uh, restaurants and storefronts are like black. So I, I don't just use black, I like to mix my own black, like a dark gray with blue, green, and magenta. And so, yeah, every brushstroke is actually slightly different. So it's not a solid block of color over there, but a little free flowing. And adding a bit of shadow around the foreground area, to cast shadow uh, from objects, from the uh, the railings, from the chairs.
Yeah, so the painting process is actually very spontaneous. I'm actually responding very quickly to what I see with uh, actually very simple colors. So I, so, I keep, so I keep my color mixing process very simple. And also I like to use a lot of leftover colors in the palette, in my palette. So as you can see, my palette is always a bit messy, but it's, it's still organized. I like to keep, you know, those greens and blues in the same area. I never put yellows in those blue and purple areas. So actually, different colors actually have their separate areas in those uh, leftover spaces in the uh, mixing area. Yeah, so don't they don't really uh, mix up and, and mix, make each other muddy. They're pretty good. Especially for smaller areas in the sketch, we don't have to mix colors from scratch. So yeah, leftover colors are always very handy. And adding this uh, second layer, the stronger red browns, and use you also using like different short and long brush strokes to show the relief of bricks. Yeah, and also mixing a little bit of uh, raw umber or a tiny bit of blue to darken. Uh, this red brown color, so there's a bit more variety with these bricks. Yeah, so every single brush stroke is slightly different. It adds a sense of three dimension to the exterior of this brick building, so it doesn't look too flat now. Just kind of color those uh, street signs with leftover gray very lightly. They're not perfectly white because they're under the shade. Just using a bit of uh, leftover green, viridian green, mixed with yellow ochre to paint these foliages in the flower bed. And also pink and red for these flowers. Yeah, and just mixing a darker tone of green for these foliages. Again, it really helps to show three dimension when you paint two layers of the same color but in different tones. Yeah, and some more stronger grays and blues for those windows on the, on the other side of the street so there's more contrast. Okay, so now I'm ready to fill these blank uh, branches and twigs with greens. First layer is always the lightest tone of green. It's like lime green mixed in with a little bit of lemon yellow. Okay, and also using very loose and dotty, dotting brush strokes. Just fill this space, observing the shape of the clusters of leaves. And same for this tree in the foreground. Yeah, using very loose and quick dashes, the less that we hesitate the looser and more lightly that our paintings look like. Yeah, so that's the first layer. I think we only need like two layers just to show the three dimension of these trees. Second layer, just a more intense green, very thin green, mixing with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Most of the, uh, the darkest shade for trees, usually they're around the middle to, to the bottom. The top is pretty much just like bright. This is how we show three dimension for trees. Just make sure we don't overwork. And the brush stroke that I'm using to suggest the form of leaves is that I'm actually observing and feeling the direction of growth for these leaves. So again, as I think as I mentioned before, these uh, brush strokes for the foliages are not just random dots. So I'm following my observation of uh, how I'm seeing and sensing the leaves are growing in, in certain directions. Okay, yeah. So don't just like paint from preconceptions with random dots. So you really have to observe and feel. Yeah, and using these grays to show the uh, these dark uh, gray brick for this building, mostly being covered by the uh, trucks and ladders of the construction site. And yeah, so now like looking back, I, I feel like it's better to not be paint these two people in the foreground. You know, sometimes I got so 
um, excited and happily enjoying the painting process, I tend to paint everything. Yeah, but anyway, I just painted the skin color with two layers of different tones. So it makes the skin color, as always, with orange and a bit of red, diluted with a lot of water, so we get that skin color. Second layer contains less water for the cheek area. And most of, most of people, you know, in the modern times, they have to wear black outfits. So yeah, I use a leftover dark gray to paint the outfits for these two ladies, a little bit of shadows on their uh, on her right cheek. Yeah, just a little bit of final rendering for her outfit. And I think that's it. It is done. Yeah, so here's the look of my finished sketch. It took me about like 45 minutes, you know, enjoying my coffee and cookie. Thank you so much for, for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update my channel two to three times a week. And I'll see you again very soon in the next few days next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.